joining us for this webinar, Succeed in Germany's Healthcare Market, the final one focused on funding options for life science companies in Germany. I will be your moderator for today's webinar. I'm Omar Oweis, Director of Investor Consulting at Germany Trade Invest, uh, coming to you out of Washington, D.C. And for those of you joining us for the first time, just a real quick uh, overview and reminder, Germany Trade Invest is the economic development agency for Germany. And um, in a nutshell, we really help international companies establish business operations in Germany. And we try to do that uh, by providing you with information and, and consulting services. And the goal really is to help you um, easily access the German market. Again, we have uh, information on uh, various industries in Germany, um, kind of what to expect also when accessing the German market, how to invest in Germany. Um, it's all free of charge. Uh, I mentioned individual consulting briefly. Again, um, market research is included in that, but not limited to these services. Uh, industry reports, like you saw the, on the publication side and the previous slide. Market entry analysis information, as well as uh, tax and legal. Uh, we can highlight funding and financing uh, availability and eligibility. That's also the main focus of today's webinar. Partnering options that may or may not be relevant to you. And uh, hopefully, if you decide on Germany, we can also highlight uh, different advantages of different sites in Germany and help you with that selection process. One of the tools we use and one of the most successful tools we've had in the past is this webinar series. And um, if you're joining us uh, for the first time uh, on today's webinar, you'll see it's actually the fourth one of a series in 2015. Uh, we had a complete series in 2014 as well. Um, you can see the ones we've highlighted in the past this year, uh, the German hospital market, the uh, over-the-counter and self-medication market, as well as a regulatory, up regulatory update for medical device manufacturers. And again, today, uh, funding options, what's available in Germany uh, for life science companies and how do I access it. Um, previous webinars and presentations, and you can all find that on that URL at the bottom of my slides, um, as well as all the webinars uh, that are recorded. And let's get to the nitty-gritty of today's agenda. Uh, we have three speakers uh, dialed in from Germany. Uh, we have Dr. Sandro Buto, who will give us uh, the life science uh, landscape, or an overview and highlight the life science landscape in Germany, what it looks like, what to expect. She'll be followed by Mr. Friedrich Hinde, who will give us um, the information and the details on the incentives in Germany, what's available and how do you access it. And last but not least, we have uh, Ms. Bettina Zidon from BlackRock Microsystems, um, a testimonial of a company that successfully set up in Germany uh, a little over, just under a year ago. Um, and we'll hear her, uh, her story and their story and um, how they access the German market. The format of the webinar today is pretty straightforward. Um, we're going to let all presenters uh, present. Um, you uh, can post questions through your webinar toolbar uh, without interrupting the, pres the presenters or the presentations. Um, the moderator, I will be able to uh, collect all those questions and we'll pose them in an open forum Q&A session at the very end uh, where all speakers uh, will be able to, uh, to, uh, to answer uh, openly. So feel free to post your questions at any, at any time and um, we'll do that after the three pres presenters. Well, let's begin with the show. Uh, the first one, Dr. Sandra Buto again, as I mentioned. Um, she's Senior Manager of Investor Consulting, the Chemicals and Healthcare Team at Germany Trade Invest in our Berlin headquarters. And she will give us the overview of the life science landscape in Germany. Sandra, I'm sending over the, lights to you, the rights to you, and we look forward to your presentation. Yeah, also one welcome from my side. Um, thanks, Omar. In the today's webinar, we are dealing with your funding options in Germany. Another important question will be how you can get access to the German life science landscape, find partners and therefore get access to the funding. To explain this will be my part today. So let me first tell you some facts about the life science industry in Germany. I would then like to explain you the unique system of our bioclusters, also known as bioregions. And in the end, I will answer the question how you can use this for your partnering and funding options. Life sciences combine the three industries, biotechnology, medical technology, and pharma. 
with a total market volume of more than 60 billion euro and about 17,000 companies in 2014 in Germany. Therefore, we are the largest life science market in Europe. Local hotspots of the industry with more than 2,000 companies are the federal states of North Rhine-Westphalia, Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria and also the health capital region Berlin and Brandenburg, followed by Hessen and Niedersachsen. To explain you the industry a little bit deeper in detail, I will focus on the biotech industry for the next slides. Nearly 50% of the dedicated biotechnology companies dealing with health or medicine uh, in the so-called red biotechnology. One third of their annually sales is spent into R&D. Just for the comparison, the med tech companies spend about 9% of the sales for R&D annually. The R&D expenditure of biotechnology companies, dedicated biotechnology companies, increased by 6% from 2013 to 2014. So you can see the industry is high innovative and has a high demand for partnering and funding to develop new projects, products. Supported is all this by public subsidies. The public subsidies increased by 4 and 5% till 2011 and reached a level of 49 million euro in 2013 only for biotechnology. In most cases, um, cooperation and partnering is needed to get access to the funding of R&D. In a survey of 231 dedicated biotechnology companies, there were nearly 1,000 corporations with research institutes like universities and also non-university research institutes like Max Planck, Helmholtz or Fraunhofer Institutes. Another 774 corporations the companies had with other non-biotech industry partners. Let me sum up the first part of uh, the presentation. Life science in Germany means a strong industry, high public subsi subsidies and in the end also excellent partnering options. How could we reach and ensure this in Germany? All this is due to the unique system of bioclusters, also known as bioregion. Over the past three decades, Germany's biotechnology clusters, we have more than 30, are developed into Europe's leading research and development hubs, but they are more than this. The clusters facilitate the collaboration between universities and R&D institutes, private sector companies, and also the politics. Biotechnology clusters have the mission to support the German biotechnology sector. Companies and foreign investors benefit from easy access to networks and also funding and research projects. The service of the biotechnology clusters include also a business development support, funding opportunities, they have partnering and industry contacts, they can help you by, uh, with the company foundation, PR trade fairs and events, they provide a lot of information and if needed they can help you with the technology transfer. Yeah, in the end of the webinar we will give you the possibility to download our fact sheet by regions with a short description of the key research areas of the different biotechnology cluster. In the last part of my presentation I would like to explain to you how you can get access and benefit from this cluster structure. The combination of a strong industry well-organized cluster structures and a lot of funding options. Friedrich will uh, talk about this in the next presentation. Leads to excellent cooperation possibilities in Germany. If your question is now how can I participate, I have good news for you. Together with the German life science clusters, we, Germany Trade and Invest, uh, are the gate to your success in Germany. We can connect you to the clusters to find investment opportunities and strategic, strategic partnerships. 
We offer this service for all your expansion plans, from partnering also to sales and service or R&D projects. And if you would like to have a production place in Germany, we are the right people to contact. We would be happy to help you. And if you have any question or if you need help, please do not hesitate to contact me or one of my colleagues. Thank you for your attention. And thank you, Sandra, for that overview. All right, again, um, Sandra's presentation will be on that URL at the very bottom, uh, Succeed in German Healthcare, um, following the, uh, the webinar. Our next speaker is uh, Mr. Friedrich Hähnle. He's Senior Manager of Investor Consulting, Financing and Incentives uh, Team um, at Germany Trade Invest as well in our Berlin headquarters. And we look forward to Friedrich's presentation, which will be on the incentives in Germany. Thank you, Omar, and welcome to all webinar attendees also from my side. My name is Friedrich, and I will outline in the next 10 to 15 minutes the basics of incentives in Germany to you. I think there would be a lot more to say, um, so I would concentrate on mainly two areas. First, grants for production facilities, and second, grants for R&D activities in Germany. So let me start with giving you an overview of the incentive landscape in Germany. First of all, there are many funding instruments available. As you can see here, we have non-repayable grants, uh, which we will focus on on the next slides. But there are also other instruments available, such as loans, guarantees, or equity-like programs. Then there are financing needs for different economic activities, such as investments into new facilities, uh, such as uh, research and development activities, or for hiring new personnel. And now here comes the attractive part of incentives in Germany. You can use all those funding instruments uh, for all funding requirements depicted below. And even better, a, co a combination of these funding instruments for um, the same project is usually possible. Since non-repayable grants are usually the most interesting funding instruments uh, for companies, I'll focus on that instrument and start with a special program that offers grants for investments into new products or service facilities. The program is called GRW, whereas the German acronym stands for the Joint Task Program to Improve Regional Economic Structures. It has a regional focus, uh, that means Eligible are those companies um, that set up new manufacturing and service facilities in specific regions in Germany. And um, the regional focus is also explained by the fact that the products or services delivered out of that facility have to go outside a 50 kilometer radius. And another objective of this, of this program is also job creation. It means that after terminating an, an, a subsidized investment project, the promised jobs have to be maintained for another five years. What type of expenditures can be financed through the GRW program? There are two options. The first option is that for your investment project, um, you get funding on uh, the new assets um, needed to, to set up the facility. And the other option is to subsidize wage costs for a two-year period. As already mentioned, the GRW program has a regional focus, so only investment projects within the colored regions shown on this map of Germany can be supported. And my next point is to show you what share of project costs can be financed with the GRW grants. It depends on the one side on um, the specific regions where the project is located in, and it depends on the other side on the size of the company. Um, you see here the, the, the three different uh, company sizes, a small, medium-sized, and large enterprise. And uh, for those of you uh, who are not familiar with the EU definition of, of company size, a small company is categorized um, if it has less than 50 employees, a medium-sized, 
uh, if it has less than 250 employees. And so you can see here on that slide that um, the best option is, for example, if a small company invests into a region bordering Poland, up to 40% of project ex expenditures can be covered by the GRW program. So now I would like to recap what you have heard so far about investment grants. The most important program is the G GRW program that has a regional focus and that supports new production and service facilities. The age intensity depends on uh, the specific location where a project is located in. It depends also on the company size, whether a company is categorized as small, medium sized or large. And it depends also on the project size, so the aid intensities we have talked about, they are only valid for projects of a volume of up to 50 million euros. And last but not least, it is also essential to mention that one has to apply for that kind of support, and that has to be done before projects start to the development bank in the federal state in which the project is located. Let me now move on to the other funding topic, topic I want to talk about, which is grants for R&D activities in Germany. First of all, I would like to stress that there are different sources available to support R&D activities in Germany. There is, for example, the Hightech Strategy 2020, that is the national support program that offers funding in so-called priority fields, for example, were in the digital economy, in uh, energy related um, activities, or in the area of healthy life. There are also um, special programs available for small and medium sized enterprises that are usually technology open. And you, you would find also R&D support at the federal state level through regional programs. And of course, uh, the European Union offers also uh, support for large international projects. Secondly, um, what is important to mention um, for R&D support in Germany, funding is always offered for specific R&D projects. So um, projects that have as objectives to develop innovative products uh, or processes or to solve a specific technological problem. And these projects then have to have a fixed timeline, time uh, the costs involved with the project. Depending then on the concrete program and the type of the project, if it's more fundamental research oriented or more application uh, oriented, then grants can cover usually up to 50% of project costs. And higher rates um, are usually possible for small, again, for small and medium sized enterprises or for projects that are carried out in cooperation with other partners. Let us now see how the application process for R&D grants usually looks like uh, within the National High Tech Strategy 2020. First of all, there are specific framework programs that um, outline the, the funding strategy of the government for the, for, the, for the next years. And we took as an example the so-called health research program. Out of that uh, health re research program, um, there are published by a relevant ministry so-called calls for proposals um, where specific, specific uh, funding topics um, are on the table. Um, as an example, I would like to mention that at this moment there is a call open um, which covers funding of innovative stem cell technologies for personalized medicine that has been published in August of this year and um, the program, the call for proposal is open until the end of November. The selection um, of project is then done by a specialized program managing organizations that act on behalf of the relevant ministry. So what are the requirements for R&D grants in Germany? We heard already that those have to be projects that are really innovative, so new products or processes have to be uh, developed uh, within such a project in Germany. Important is also that um, applicants have to have a physical presence in Germany. 
And the last important point when it comes to access R&D grants is that um, the results um, of those R&D projects, they have to be commercialized in Germany, meaning with an own production or a licensee agreement, etc. So let me now summarize again what you've heard about R&D grants in Germany. Um, first of all, there's no sole program available. There are different programs available um, at the national, the regional, and even at the EU level. The aid intensity, so the public co-financing share, depends on the type of project, um, again, on the company size, and on the fact whether a, an R&D project is carried out alone or in cooperation with partners. And last but not least, the application um, is also necessary uh, in this funding area, and that has to be done before starting the, the relevant project. At the end of my presentation, I would like to offer you our support when it comes to make use of incentives for your project in Germany. That usually starts in identifying um, project-specific funding opportunities. Once that is uh, done, we help you also uh, with um, uh, the application part, so we explain you what documentation is needed. And our support does not stop in explaining you about public funding opportunities. We identify also other financial instruments to make your um, project financing complete and can also um, establish contacts to financial partners such as banks in Germany. So these were the highlights of incentives in Germany. You're more than welcome to pose your questions in the Q&A part or any time to these contact contact details. And yes, I thank you very much for your attention. And at this point, I'll like to hand over to my colleague Omar again. And we thank you, Friedrich, for that detailed overview of what's available in Germany and how we can access it. Great. Again, Friedrich's presentation will also be available on our website um, following the webinar. Last but not least, we have, oh, you know what, one more quick housekeeping item. I do see some questions coming in, so thank you to those who posed those questions. Keep them coming, um, because following um, Ms. Seedorn's presentation, we will have the open forum Q&A. Um, you can use your uh, webinar uh, chat or toolbar feature, and again, I will collect those and we'll present those at the very end. Sorry, Bettina. Um, again, our final presenter is uh, Ms. Bettina Sidon. Um, she is the uh, Office Manager of Europe, or the European subsidiary of BlackRock Microsystems um, in Hanover, Germany. And uh, it's a testimonial company we worked with, and uh, we're very happy um, is happy in Germany. So, Bettina, I'm sending over the rights to you. Thank you, Omar. <laughs> Yeah, it's a real pre pleasure for me to share BlackRock's experiences on this platform. Um, what you just heard and saw was uh, maybe a little bit theoretical, and my part would be to explain a little bit our last few months. It's only a few months that we are here in Germany now, and um, yeah, I'd like to share our experience with you. Um, let me first start to introduce BlackRock a little bit. Um, maybe you haven't heard about us before. We were founded in 2008 in Salt Lake City as a spin-off of the University of Utah. Um, our founder is Professor Florian Solzbacher, um, who is working uh, closely with the University of Utah and somehow found the way out of um, yeah, the schooling system into the economies area. Um, we are developing and manufacturing microelectrodes, electronic software and surgical tools for the field, mainly in the neuroscience area, neural engineering and neuroprosthetics. Um, our customers are all over the world. Um, I would say around about 40% are in the USA, um, the rest beyond, and mostly we have a strong European market. Um, when, when they started in 2008, they tried to cover the European market, but it was such a lot of work and um, yeah, it was quite difficult for them to handle it uh, from the US side. 
so they made the decision to open a European subsidiary. The next step was, um, yeah, uh, where should we settle, where should we go? Um, of course, we saw that we have many customers already in Germany, uh, also interesting research partners. Um, also, maybe because uh, Professor Florian Dolzbacher studied in Germany, um, spent lots of time here and he had valuable contacts here. But still, it was difficult to find the right location and um, we were looking at Berlin, we were looking at Freiburg, we were looking at Hanover um, and it was, yeah, especially in this point, we were in strong contact with uh, Germany Trade and Invest because um, they could uh, help us to find the pros and the cons. Um, what we were looking at, of course, is um, where are our partners, um, which costs will arise, um, where will we have good fundings. And as Mr. Händler explained before, um, we have really uh, lo lots of possibilities here to make the start uh, easier. But still, it is a lot of administration and when you start, you don't really know how, how is the name of the organization, how do you apply for a grant, how much time does it take, um, and there you have really great support with Germany Trade and Invest. We also um, have great support from the federal state of Lower Saxony, because as you see, we decided to go for Hanover. Um, yeah, the, the ministry helps us a lot and um, lots of our fundings and projects um, are based on the federal state and the ministry and the banks that are involved with that. Yeah, our, our grand opening was almost one year ago, end of November 2014, which was a, just, just a great event and I would uh, like to give you the opportunity to look on our website where we have a little uh, movie about our opening event. Um, Minister Lies was here, um, lots of people from, of course, out of the research field, uh, our customers were here, um, from the ministry many people were here, pol politicians, because of course uh, BlackRock here in Hanover is um, very, um, yeah, how do you say, um, um, valuable for, for, for Hanover as well. Um, it was not really easy to, to start at all. Um, when I had my first day here, it all started in, in one office where we had three tables and uh, two, two um, salespeople were sitting here, here with their MacBooks and one Skype telephone and that was all. Um, and then I looked at it and thought, wow, there's a lot to do. Um, went to the US, to Salt Lake City where we have our headquarter. I spent two weeks there to get to know all the organization, like administration, HR, um, yeah, uh, financial things, uh, production, I went into the clean room and storage, yeah, everything you can think of. Um, then I came back and I thought, wow, there's a lot to do here. Um, and yeah, with a, then you can imagine that it's really nice that you have uh, some contacts whom you can call and say, oh listen, I have, I have to find a bank, I have to uh, do this and that and then you have people who give you the contact and, and you do the rest. So this makes, makes it really much, much easier. Um, Difficult was to find uh, the right staff. It's still difficult because we are very specialized and we are international. So on the one hand side, you want to have um, people who are who studied in, in a very specific field. Also, you want to have people who are good at sales and who go out and, and yeah do sales, which is an important part for a company. So you have to be patient, and especially in the beginning, um, the sales force is really important but it needs time to develop and the team is here still very, very small. Um, oh, I was too quick. Somewhere I said we have, we have 11 um, employees right now. 
um, we are steadily growing, but still you were, when you work here, it's not like in a big company where you have a department for everything. You have to wear different hats and you have to do everything that you can imagine you can do. Um, but it's really nice to see that we are growing and it's getting more found. Everything is getting more found with the time now. Um, we have a clean room here in Hanover as well. And you can imagine it needs a lot of funding because the machinery in there is very, very expensive. So also there we uh, had, had, had great support um, from everywhere uh, to see how we can manage this and realize that. Um, yeah, in the end, I would say um, encourage you to, to, yeah, to build up your business here. Um, don't hesitate to go into, into contact with me or uh, with Germany Trade and Invest. And if you have any questions, they are a wonderful source uh, to help you. Good luck for everything. Thank you, Bettina. We'll leave that slide up for just another second in case somebody wants to contact you directly. Appreciate the presentation and the kind words about Germany Trade and Invest. All right. We've come to the final part of our webinar, and uh, we have a couple of questions already in. Uh, thanks again for, uh, for our active uh, attendees and uh, to our presenters as well uh, for your presentations. Um, we'll begin right away. Um, first question here, um, looks like it's one for Sandra. Um, you talked a lot about the uh, bio clusters and uh, part of the landscape. Um, do all the clusters have the same focus in Germany? Yeah, thank you, Omar, for this question. No, they, they don't. So some of the clusters dealing with uh, uh, life science at all, so it's medtech, biotech, and pharma. Other clusters are concentrated on the biotech and pharma field. Uh, they have also uh, different key research areas. So I think the best would be to have a look in the fact sheet that's possible to download now on the right hand of uh, uh, the, the uh, webinar panel. You can download this now and have a look inside. And if you have any questions on, on the different clusters, if you need help for this, you can come back to us. Thank you, Sandra. And yes, thank you for uh, putting the handout out. Um, it's now available for download. Um, next question here um, from an attendee. Can I get a rough overview of a minimum figure in euros um, in order to enter the German healthcare market as a foreign investor, as an investor? Um, a rough overview of a minimum figure, I guess a you know, financial figure here. Um, maybe Friedrich, if you don't mind. Yes, um, I think if, if that question uh, tackles um, the area of, of, of formation of a, of a company, um, I can tell you that if it comes to um, forming a limited liability company in Germany, um, which is called the GmbH, so the, the minimum um, share capital requirement is 25,000 euros, if that's what the question was about. Yes, I believe so. I think it's uh, less incentive related, but more just uh, you know a, a, a financial figure of uh, you know basic investment. Yes, so twenty-five thousand euros. Thank you for this. Another question here. Um, uh, attendee also is thanking Mr. Hainle for his presentation. Um, has a question regarding the R and D, a research and development grant funding. Um, are there any success indicators? to be measured uh, within the scope of this financial support option? And if yes, uh, with, what are those measures? Uh, and uh, Yes, I, I would say if, if you mean the success um, of a specific project, then uh, it's the comparison um, between what you've promised in the application, so what what the, the development uh, of, of a product should look like, and then wh what, what is the outcome of the project, and then program managing organization uh, check um, check the outcome and, and see if if that has been been reached. What is I think not possible is to to to, to extend um, already funding that has been applied for. So uh, companies would really have to stick what they have written down in their application. 
Okay, so really adhere to, as you said, adhere to what is written down in the application and cannot uh, really di di divert from that uh, application. Exactly. Thank you, for it. Thank you, Fritz. Another question just came in. Um, how long will it take from offering the innovative idea till getting the final financial approval? Yes, I think that really depends on uh, the funding program uh, that you want to access. Um, as a general rule, I would say um, the, the, the funding on the, on the regional level in the federal states and the funding for small and medium-sized enterprises um, can be accessed quicker than um, within the high-tech strategy or, or at the European Union level. So as a rule of thumb, I would say it, it takes about one to three months in order to get a um, definite answer. Thank you for this. I hope that answers the question for, to the attendees. Um, another question has come in here. Um, are there uh, we've highlighted, you guys have highlighted German um, incentives. Are there other European funds that uh, that an investor can access? Uh, I would say uh, the, the, the only area in which you as an investor can access directly uh, European funds is uh, the, the European Horizon 2020 program for transnational cooperation um, projects in the R&D area. All the other funds um, uh, from Europe you might hear about, they are usually um, only accessed indirectly. It means that the European Union provides um, funds to, to its member states and those member states use then the money yeah, for the budgets of their, of, of their own programs. So you, you wouldn't see exactly that it's coming from the European Union, but it's in it. Thank you for this. Um, another question here: um, Is there a list, uh, or do we have access? Do we, Germany, Trinvest, do we have a list of highly needed projects or, or, or desired projects in the biotech and pharma industry in Germany? Um, maybe a question for Sandra: Is there such a list like that? No, no, we don't have a list uh, on that. Uh, the uh, inquiries for partnering projects are very individual. So if 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 you need a partner for producing or have an R&D cooperation, then you can send an outline to me and maybe I send you back an form to fill out what you need and then I will send this outline to all the 30 clusters to ask them if there any cooperation partner or a possibility to have a cooperation. So this is the way to, to find the partner. So we are really your gate to these clusters. Thank you, Sandra. A question here for BlackRock, um, Bettina Sidon. Um, did BlackRock take advantage of any incentives uh, when, when entering the German market a year ago? Incentives, you, you mean um, like projects? Um, I guess, uh, yes. Uh, yeah, we, we had, for example, one, yeah, one funding was really very interesting. Um, that's um, from the MBG, Mittelständische Beteiligungsgesellschaft Niedersachsen. As you can hear, it's uh, Lower Saxony based. Uh, it's like, I don't know, maybe you can help me with the English word, uh, Stille Beteiligung. It would be a silent partnership, so an equity-like yeah. program. And, and it was uh, quite an interesting sum. So um, that helped us a lot in the beginning. And I, they have a new program as well, uh, which I can really recommend. It's just coming out, and we will also apply for that in the second go now. And the end bank is very strong here and helps a lot. Thank you, Bettina. Yes, and Friedrich, thank you also for that. Uh, it sounds like obviously that there are um, there are regional uh, incentives available, as as you highlighted, uh, the, the different states and the different regions uh, can offer different um, different packages. Right. Thank you. Another question here, does R&D, research and development, include medical device clinical trials? Yeah, that's a very special case, I would say, um, if, if, if it comes to, to, to grants. Um, usually that, that's not covered by um, R&D grant programs. I've seen in the past only um, calls for proposals um, for very specific um, illnesses, so to say, um, but uh, actually if, if, if it comes to, to normal medicine that, that, or medtech, that's not, not covered by R&D funding. 
Thank you, Philly. Another question has come in. Um, can an investor enter the market as, uh, sorry, in the form of a shareholder or a co-founder of a company and not as a sole company founder? Um, and is there such a list of companies starting up and seeking co-founders? Maybe a question for Frido, if I can repeat it again if you want me to. Um, yes. Uh, uh, Sandra, you may correct me, but I, I, I'm not aware of, of a list of, of companies that are in no. need of, of, of co-founders. Co um, and of course, um, if it comes to funding in Germany, it's not depending on, on, on uh, um, the shares, to, to whom the shares belong. The most important thing is that there is a legal entity within Germany independently from, um, from foreign ownership or not, and that that legal entity is carrying out the project within Germany. Great, thank you, Friedrich. Um, looks like we're down to our uh, some of our last questions here. Um, Another question here, are, are there special funding programs available for foreign enterprises? There's not really much clarification there, but special additional funding programs available for foreign enterprises? Yeah, I would say that connects to, 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 the, to the last uh, question. Um, actually, there are no special programs for foreign enterprises. All funding available in Germany um, is for companies that are being established in Germany and for projects carried out in Germany uh, independent from the ownership. Okay, thank you. Um, maybe I can give, uh, we don't have any questions at this point, uh, maybe I can give each of the speakers a final word uh, to wrap up in summary if, if you wish. Um, Sandra, would you like to begin since you began the presentation? <laughs> yeah, I would like uh, to begin. So yeah, you um, saw we, we have really a unique system of biotechnology clusters and uh, starting points for your business. So if you would like to enter the German market to have a first footprint also, then this would be a great starting point for you. All the clusters do have a lot of events. You can participate for free in most cases. They are all interested in getting more and more international. So they, they started years ago to do also this event in English. So also the, the language barrier would be low for you. And maybe it's a very good starting point for you. And I would be happy to help you out to get, to get the contact to them. Thank you, Sandra. Friedrich, would you like to follow? Yes, and I think <clears throat> I would like to make the point that um, there are very broad funding opportunities um, when you decide to uh, set up um, a facility or a project in Germany. And our offer is always um, yeah, to guide you through the funding jungle and uh, yeah, tell you what is the most appropriate funding source for your project within the country. Thank you, Friedrich. And uh, Bettina Tidon, any other words of wisdom? Yeah, I think, um, <laughs> are you looking at my age or what? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, yeah, what I can say in, <laughs> in the end, uh, I find networking really important. So whenever you, as an American, we as an American company coming to Hanover, uh, we found it really important to, to, to network, to talk to the people, to talk to the institutions, um, just not be afraid and, and go ahead here. Yeah. Thank you very much. At this point, I just want to put up my uh, contact information. If you have any questions um, or you have trouble downloading any of the presentations um, off of our URL at the top there, um, please contact me. Um, again, I'm based out of the Washington, D.C. office for Germany Trade Invest. And I want to thank uh, our speakers again. And I think that they gave us an excellent overview of their, their, their individual presentation. Um, their presentations and the webinar, everything has been recorded and everything will be available on our website. Um, we really appreciate everyone joining us. Um, one more housekeeping item. There will be a survey following this webinar upon completion. It um, would be really great if you guys could fill that out for us. Um, it seems like there may have been a couple of uh, problems with, with logging in. Um, again, we need that feedback uh, so we can always uh, improve on our webinars. Uh, thank you so much again, and uh, have a wonderful day and have a wonderful evening.